Okay, hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I'm gonna do the consumer's utility maximization problem when they have Cobb-Douglas preferences. And first, I'm gonna do it for this specific numeric example I got right here. And then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do an interlude where I'll talk about the generic case. And then I will do, I'll show some insights with the Cobb-Douglas preferences or relative to Cobb-Douglas demands pertaining to the shares of incomes that consumers are spending. Okay, so suppose the consumer's utility from good X and good Y is coming from the following preference structure, the utility function, x to the one-third times y to the two-thirds. Price of good x is three, price of good y is four, and income is 24. So my budget constraint is three x plus four y is equal to 24. I'm gonna find the optimal bundle. Uh, along the way, I'm gonna find my, my Marshallian demands, and then evaluating the Marshallian demands at these prices and income will give me my optimal bundle. So I'm gonna use a Lagrangian approach this involves writing out my Lagrangian function, which is going to amount to having my objective function minus my constraint. And this lambda is going to be a penalty for violating the constraint. So here is my utility function, x to the one-third, y to the two-third, minus lambda, times the, the quantity 3x plus 4y minus 24. Right, so budget constraint. Basically what I do is I take my budget constraint, drop it in with a a minus sign here instead of an equals and a minus so minus lambda budget constraint with a minus instead of a equals and there's my Lagrangian cool so I want to take the partial of the Lagrangian function with respect to X with respect to Y and with respect to lambda that amounts to just taking well, partial with respect to X so that derivative it's going to be one-third X reduce this by one, so to the minus two thirds, and then this y to the two thirds comes along for the ride. Over here, I'm gonna get three lambda. It's gonna be the derivative, set that equal to zero. And then here I'm gonna have dl dy, partial with respect to y, so it's gonna be two thirds x to the one third. This part's coming along for the ride. y to the, well, reduce the power by one, minus one third. And then this portion is just gonna be negative lambda times four is the derivative, right? Okay, now I'm gonna solve this system. Oh, and then differentiate with respect, to, with, with respect to lambda. What does that do? It just gives us our constraint, right? So you can move this to the other side and you have three X plus four Y is equal to 24. That is exactly our budget constraint. Anyway, so I'm gonna solve this system of equations and that's gonna give us our tangency condition. Where with the Cobb-Douglas preferences, these are nice well-behaved preferences. We are gonna get a tangency solution, an interior solution for our optimal bundle. So what we're gonna to do to solve is I am going to solve this for lambda, solve this for lambda, and then substitute, right? So move this to the other side, divide by three, is gonna be this stuff divided by three. Move this to the other side, divide by four, this stuff divided by four, and that gives us this. Those are both equal to lambda, so I'll set them equal to each other. Notice, as I've written this here, this is literally my marginal utility of x divided by the price of x. That's mux over px. Here's my marginal utility of y divided by price of good y. It's mux or muy over y. Right, so this is my bang for your buck principle that even goes back to like econ 101 depending on where that's taught. And anyway, this is one and the same uh, with the marginal rate of substitution equals the price ratio as I show in this next line. So let's cross multiply and now I have marginal rate of substitution, which is the ratio of marginal utilities, is equal to the price ratio. Cool. So now it's just a, a little bit of algebra to clean things up here. So uh, let's see. So one third divided by two thirds. Well, one third divided by two thirds is one third times three halves. Threes cancel and I'm left with one half. When you are dividing, when you have a fraction and you have this base, so I'm gonna look for the same base, x and x, to this power. So when you have powers in a fraction, the way this works is you are gonna subtract whatever is this power from this one, right? So this is gonna be x to the minus two thirds minus one third is gonna be my power on x. Well, x to the minus two thirds minus one third is x to the minus one and any base raised to a negative power is gonna be the same as that same base with a positive power appearing in the denominator of a fraction. So X appears down here. What about Y? I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have uh, two thirds minus one third, 
wait, two thirds minus minus one third is gonna be two thirds plus one third is one. So y appears at the top of the fraction. Cool. So this is my tangency condition, y over two x. Oh, <laughs> you know what? And if you would have gone back here, and if you would have just taken a positive monotone transformation, if you had taken the, if you would have log transform this, take the natural log, then your um, this whole thing would have been way easier. But we most most of the time we do it this way, and so um, I shouldn't say I shouldn't I shouldn't say it was going to be way easier in the sense of like we've done something wrong by doing it this way because that's not true. Okay, so. Here's their tangency condition. Y over two X is equal to three fourths. And so I'm, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to substitute into the budget constraint cleverly. So I'm gonna write this as, oh, well, so let's solve this for X and let's solve something for X and then drop in for, uh, drop in for Y and let's solve something for Y, drop in for X. And so here I have, well, canceled, I've gotten rid of a two and then Done a little bit of manipulation and that's where I got this two-thirds y from so kind of stare at this for a second and realize how you could clean that up and then substitute uh, two-thirds y for x here I solve for y and I find y's y uh, my optimal demand for y is 4 optimal consumption of y is 4 and then solving substituting over here for x 3 halves x is y and my optimal demand for x was 8 thirds then I'll check to make sure that I've exhausted my budget when I consume that bundle at these prices. Yes, it works. Okay, so then I'm gonna ask a whole bunch of questions that are gonna get us some insights into how Cobb Douglas works. So what happens, for instance, if the price of good X triples? How does the optimal bundle change? Well, we get a new budget constraint. Now it's gonna be, rather than 3X, it's gonna be 9X. The price of Y doesn't change my income doesn't change, but my price ratio changes. If my price ratio changes, then my tangency condition changes, and what I'm substituting into my budget constraint changes. So let's redo that part. I'm not gonna go do my whole Lagrangian again. Nothing else changed, right? Marginal rates of substitutions are still gonna be the same. We haven't changed the utility function. All we do is change the price ratio. So it's a really simple analysis. I'm just gonna take my marginal rate of substitution from above. Here's my new price ratio, because the price of good X tripled. Cool. I'm going to solve this for Y, solve it for X, plug into the budget constraint to solve for my demands. And so here is my substitution for X. Here is my substitution for Y. I'm doing this in two separate, two separate lines of work. Here I've solved for my optimal demand for Y. I don't know why it does that. There's some, that is absolutely ridiculous. I have no idea. Don't follow that. It's probably some, I don't know, that's, something from good notes I think it is absolutely infuriating so um, something clickable okay fine uh, here we've sell for here we sell for our optimal demand for X uh, and notice only X has changed so here was our demand for Y four here's our demand for Y again for what changed just our demand for X it went from eight thirds to eight ninths. Oh, that's predictable, right? So price of good X tripled from eight thirds to eight ninths. There's something suggestive there. So sure enough, we'll learn about that in a second. Uh, what happens if the price of good Y doubles? How does, how does my optimal bundle change? Well, my new budget constraint is now gonna be three X plus eight Y is equal to 24. And so again, my ratio of marginal utilities doesn't change. But what does change is my price ratio. So this gives me a new tangency condition, which I'm gonna solve, substitute into my budget constraint again. And in doing so, I substitute for X, I substitute for Y, and I find, oh, now my demand for Y has changed. It went from Y4 to Y2. And this one doesn't have something to hover over. That's weird. So, sorry, that shouldn't distract me, but it does. Okay. so. Uh, we found only Y has changed. So now I want to point something out. With the Cobb Douglas preferences, the choices X star and Y star are invariant to the changes in the prices of the other good. We can get this from our generic Cobb Douglas demands. So we'll find our Marshallian or uncompensated demands. So here would be our generic Lagrangian for Cobb Douglas. Here'd be our generic partials, our generic partial derivatives. Here's our generic tangency condition. Here's our 
generic substitution into the budget constraint. All right, so our generic tangency condition, what have I done here? Well, here I'm, I'm writing this. Oh, there's actually, so I shouldn't go over this. Sorry, I, I can't go over this fast. I have to do this slowly and deliberately because what we were going to do here is I'm getting my tangency condition, which is like cross multiplying. So now I've got alpha y py and beta times x px. And you might be tempted to solve this thing for x or solve it for y or something. No, resist that temptation because we want to leave this in when you have the generic when you have the generic version you want to leave this as xpx and ypy because then there's more we can substitute for so this I'll just leave this as my expenditure for x leave this as my expenditure for y because then I can substitute for this whole thing right isn't that cool yeah it is so once I let's just look at substituting for y or substituting for x I'm going to drop in alpha over beta ypy for x for for xpx sorry and now I'm going to factor out my PYY good and in doing so this allows me to isolate my alpha over beta and this one now you're staring at this and you're like what on earth am I doing well what I what I know I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be dividing both sides by something to clean this up I ultimately want to isolate Y before I do that I I want to make sure that I've got this in the most conducive format possible so what I'm going to do is get a common denominator between alpha over beta and 1. How do I do that? Let's write 1 cleverly as beta over beta. That's still just 1. Now I have alpha over beta in the numerator, beta in the denominator. That's great because now I can multiply both sides by alpha over alpha plus beta, and that's real clean. And I can, multi I can divide both sides by PY, and that lets me solve for Y. Here's my generic Cobb-Douglas demand for good Y. And I did something similar over here for X, right? So um let's you, you could stop the video and go back or kind of pause the video and take a look at my work for x the same as i did over here um so these functions are the gen are the generic cobb douglas demands and notice they do not depend on the price of the other good here's the price here's the demand for y it depends on income and the price of good y here's my demand for x it depends on income and the price of good x so what we did is we found our generic demands. Uh, we can write them actually in this really interesting format. We can write this. So let me go back. Let me take my generic demands and multiply through by PX here and multiply by PY here. And this gives me my, ex my optimal expenditure of X as a share of my income and my optimal expenditure of Y as a share of my income. Why do I say that? Because look, here's my income. This is a fraction. They're complementary fractions. I'll show you this with a numeric with a numeric example and become clear. But expressed this way, we see the consumer's expenditure as a good, as a constant share of their income. That's special. That's unique to Cobb Douglas. That doesn't happen with every type of preferences. So notice how this works for our numerical example. Here in our numerical example, we end up getting one third and two thirds. So the consumer is going to spend a third of their income on good X. My optimal expenditure. It's going to be a third of my income on X and a third of my income on Y. So what's happening here, let's check this. Let's verify in the, in the different situations I gave us. Price of good X is 3. Price of good Y is 4. So how much X did we get? 8 thirds. How much Y did we get? 4. And let's see. Is my expenditure a third of my income? Income was 24. Yeah. 8 is a third of 24. And 16 is 2 thirds of 24 holds and then what about when my when my price of good x was nine and my price of good y was four then i consumed eight ninths of x and this the total expenditure was what eight and four of y total expenditure was 16. when the price of good x was three price of good y was eight now i had eight thirds of x i had two of y cost me eight so my total expenditure of, of y constant still at 16. So anyway, I think that's kind of cool. Um, all right, for some reason my video of myself has just stopped. So now is as good a place as any to stop this video. So, anyway.